the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all the joyful souls at this great service to now shout hallelujah. If you are sure to return with multiplied joy, shout a louder hallelujah. If you believe from tonight there shall be no more casting down of your head, the remaining days of your life, Shout the loudest hallelujah. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, thank you for this awesome time in your presence. Thank you for this special Holy Ghost service tonight. And thank you for your set man, our Father and the Lord who just turned 80. Amen. Thank you for your grace upon his life and thank you for making a blessing to his generation. Thank you for the great things you are doing in this church. Thank you for the expansion. Thank you for the growth. Thank you for the impact of this ministry around the world. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Now speak to us in these few minutes and let your name be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Please help me give Jesus a big hand of praise and be seated. Amen. By the grace of God, My wife and I have been part of this family for about 40 years now. It's been our privilege and our benefits to have been directed this way by the Holy Ghost. Interestingly, no one introduced me to Daddy. No, I heard from God directly and it's been awesome it's been beautiful these past few years and to go beyond the glory so we honor you we salute god's grace upon your life and it shall only be on the increase it will never go down moses took on a new assignment at 80. god hasn't changed Every new thing God is showing you, it will bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. What a large heart. What a humble spirit. What an ever joyful, anointed servant of God. We are blessed to have you in our own time and our own generation in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking tonight on rejoice in the Lord. Paul the Apostle said, rejoice in the Lord and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 and he went further in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 rejoice evermore let there be no joyless moment in your life it's important for us to know that God will never ask us to do what he has not enabled us engraced us equipped us to do it does not tempt any man with evil our redemption is an embodiment of joy there is the joy of salvation 
Isaiah 51 and verse 12, I mean, Psalm 51 verse 12. And we saw that validated by the fruit of the Spirit, which are the proofs of redemption. And one of them is joy, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 2, verse 22. So joy is part and parcel of our package in redemption. And when we are baptized in the Holy Ghost, we are endued with the oil of joy and the oil of gladness, intoxicating joy. So we move from the realm of joy to the realm of intoxicating joy by the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. The kingdom of God is not in food and drink, but in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. They thought they were drunken when the Holy Ghost came and Peter said, no, these are not drunken, just the third hour of the day. The bars are not open yet. This is the Holy Ghost manifesting himself with joy. So you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have a second level of joy at work in you. And then as we get engaged with the world, Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16, he said, thy words were found and I did eat them and they became the joy and rejoicing of my heart. So access to the world steers joy on the inside. Men and women who move in revelation don't run out of joy. Thank God for joy of salvation. Thank God for the joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, the two leads us into the world. Mark chapter 4 verse 11. Unto you is given to know the means of the kingdom of God to them that are without who are not saved. These things are mere parables. And when the Holy Ghost is coming, we will teach you all things. I mean, to remember us all things, whatsoever you have heard of me. John 14 and verse 26. So we have joy in salvation, joy in the Holy Ghost, and joy in revelation. So we have no business being depressed. Redemption forbids depression. Redemption is our escape from a world of depression. I therefore stand tonight to cause every bandage of depression tormenting anyone under the sound of my voice. And then Revelation steers faith. And faith steers joy unspeakable full of glory. First Peter chapter 1 verse 8. Whom having not seen, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable full of glory. So everything around our salvation stimulates joy. Steers joy, arouses joy. Therefore, from now, no one will ask you again in your life what is wrong. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest say many of you are there. Yeah. No one will ever ask you again what is wrong. Yeah. Your look will no longer be wrong. Yeah. Your words will no longer be wrong. Your outlook will no longer be wrong. Your disposition will no longer be wrong. Everything shall keep on being right with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And what more? Please listen to this. When we are saved, we are raised together with him and made together with him in heavenly places. The headquarters of joy, eruptive joy. He that seated in heaven shall laugh. All they do in heaven is laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. So, so when we come into fellowship, we have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. We have come to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 22 to 24. So being in fellowship, sustains the joy of the Lord in our life. The farther you are away from fellowship, the farther you are from joy. 
settled down with Jesus. Enjoy the fellowship of the saints. Be in church. Recharge the battery of your joy as you come into the midst of God's people. And we are in Zion. We are in heavenly places. And all we do there is laugh and laugh and laugh. Your laughter begins today. I've not seen one day that I had the privilege of talking to daddy in my life that laughter does not erupt. It must come from either side and not the time from all the sides. All the time. Laughter and laughter and laughter. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. My God, laughter. That shall be your experience from now. Somebody once asked me, Brother David, do you ever have problems? I said, maybe it came, I didn't know. You can introduce yourself to someone, you have no business with him, so you can't remember anymore. He sees you again the next moment, you can't remember anymore, because there's nothing you're doing with him. From now, you have no business fellowshipping with depression, with anger, with hatred, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, why must we rejoice? Why must we rejoice? Lack of joy carries tremendous cost. And I will outline five of them. Number one, lack of joy will lead to loss of access to his presence. And without his presence, our life cannot make a difference. Loss of access to his presence It's a very costly thing. Is any merry? The Bible says, let him sing. Is any joyful? That's the meaning. James 5 13. And God inhabits the praises of his people. You are merry hearted, it erupts into praise. And God inhabits that presence. And that equals supernatural, unquestionable breakthroughs. How? When they went out of Egypt, God was in their midst. The sea saw them, it fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams. Psalm 117 and verse 1 to 7. What led the sea that thou fled us? O Jordan that thou was driven back. He said, tremble thou art at the presence of God. Everything that troubles others, tremble at your presence when you carry God's presence. From today, no door shall be shut against you by the devil anymore. <laughs> Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10, he said, lift up your head, see gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting door that the king of glory might come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord. Every everlasting door lift up their heads at his presence. So when you carry his presence, you become a breakthrough entity in the race of life. And what we see all around here today and across the nations of the world, nothing can define breakthrough beyond what we see. So touchable, so feasible even the blind can see it, that this is God at work why? joy paved the way for his presence which has come to make the difference may that become your experience in life <laughs> number two lack of joy will lead to loss of access to revelation 
and revelation is the trigger of supernatural breakthrough in life. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Isaiah 12 and verse 3. Paul, a man of unusual revelation, said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. And the secret of men are in their stories. The more joyful we are, the greater our access to revelation. And the greater realms of breakthroughs we walk in. And Philippians chapter 1 verse 18 talking about the preachers who are opposed to him he said whether in pretense or in truth the gospel is preached and yea in that I will rejoice so joy in season joy out of season that would be called joy in the Lord joy in season joy out of season he was under severe attack he said yet I will rejoice yea I will rejoice yea I will rejoice Joy is a covenant gateway to realms of unusual revelations. And the more revelation we catch, the more change of level from one realm of glory to another we experience. As we behold them, revelation, as in a glass, we are changed from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. So we have not seen anything yet in this church. From glory to glory to glory to glory. Till when? Until the perfect day when Jesus comes. From glory to glory to glory. No left ear will know a downward trend anymore. No left ear will know a downward trend anymore. It shall be from glory to glory until the perfect day. And that is until Jesus returns. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Why must we rejoice in the Lord? Joy is a covenant facilitator of health and wholeness. Health and wholeness. Health and wholeness. Proverbs 17 and verse 22, the Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dry the bones. The more joyful we are, the healthier we live. In Proverbs 18 and verse 14, it said, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit who can bear. The more joyful we are, the healthier we live. The more joyful we are, the healthier we live. If joy grants us access to his presence, the Bible says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appear before the Lord. So, joy facilitates our access to realms of health and wholeness. The last breakdown anyone here suffered is the last you will ever know. <laughs> Until our spirit is broken, our body cannot be broken. So rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice in season and out of season. I was trying to pen down a few things on my little story, autobiography. And then I looked at it in the last run and I discovered that challenges were not put there. So I put a chapter on my share of challenges. That you are rejoicing, you don't have challenges, you are smarter than your challenges. Oh, they are saying you are smarter than your challenges. I need God and I can't find God without joy, so I rejoice in spite of what is happening. It's the best chapter of that book that I think has been written. My share of challenges, I wrote it year in, year out. Is there a year without challenges? I don't know. But thanks be to God, who always comes to triumph in Christ and make it known by us the serve of his knowledge in every place. From tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus, no one, no one shall be crushed under challenges. <laughs> it is challenges that makes champions. You can't be a boxing, you know, heavyweight boxing champion without 
accepting challenges. You can't say you are not interested. You must. They must punch you here, punch you here, before you can carry the belt. As long as you don't give up, you carry the belt at last. In the name of Jesus, every challenge facing you today shall be turned to a testimony. As we round up, number four. Without joy, we lose our access to divine intervention. Habakkuk 3, verse 17 to 19, although the fig tree shall not blossom, there shall not be fruit in the vine. The fruit of the olive shall fail, and the heart shall yield no, flour, no meat. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And my God will step in to intervene on my behalf. It will make my feet like hands feet and get me through to my higher places. You can't assess divine intervention without genuine joy and rejoicing. Please, come away. Come away. We must get smarter than the devil this time. He said, thou by by the commandment who made me wiser than my enemies. Wiser than my enemies. You don't get anywhere casting down your head. You get through every challenge, rejoicing in the Lord at all times, evermore. That baptism is yours tonight in Jesus' name. And I believe by the time this special ghost night is over, another you will be going back home. Yeah. It will be another you forever. Yeah. Everybody will be laughing with you. He said, God has made me to laugh. It will make you to laugh. Yeah. Another here will laugh with you. Yeah. And your laughter shall be all through your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, finally, very important. Lack of joy will rob us of our rewards of stewardship. Rewards, rewards, rewards for serving God is only guaranteed by joy and rejoicing. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 and 48. The Bible says, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 to 48, because Thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of all things. For the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. What? In hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall lay a rod of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed you. What? What? I heard that word from the Lord in 1977. Serving God does not guarantee the world, but serving God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. 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 In Joel chapter 1, verse 12, all the harvest of the field is perished. Because joy is withered away from the children of men. Joy. When joy withers, harvest perishes. When joy withers, returns from our labor, perishes. No one here shall labor in vain. You shall not 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 labor in vain. Not labor in vain. Why? He has not asked the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Isaiah 45, verse 19. He said, The word of them that diligently seek him. Everyone shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Please don't destroy your labor by giving room to satanic traps of depression and dankness. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, and again I say, rejoice. May the joy of the Lord return home in new dimensions in the life of everyone of us from this service. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please stand to your feet, everyone. 
give the Lord Jesus a joyful clap offering. Give him the biggest clap offering you can afford. Return him back to him all the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, why must I rejoice? We slept and awoke because he sustained us. We went through fire and through water. We were not swallowed. A thousand is falling on our right hand. Ten thousand on our right hand. They are not coming here to all because it's awake keeping up. Why should we rejoice? He saved our soul that money cannot buy. Why should we rejoice? We are sure of heaven at the end of our journey on earth. Come on, give the Lord another big hand of praise. Please lift up your two hands and receive for yourself, yourself tonight a fresh baptism of the joy of the Lord. It's not the same that came to this house that we return back home. You are returning with multiplied joy. Tangible joy. Touchable joy. Joy that will never know a setback anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Give the Lord one more time a big hand of praise and be seated, please. If you have an assurance that truly you are receiving a fresh baptism of the joy of the Lord tonight, let the Lord himself hear you shout, joy of the Lord. One more time, joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are saying thank you to Bishop David Oyedepo for that awesome word in season and there shall be divine intervention for joy in all of our lives in the name of Jesus more of God's